everyone, welcome to another edition of MacBreak Studio. I'm in the studio with my senior editor, Travis Richmond. And uh, we couldn't do what we do without him. He does everything. He does audio, he does sound, he does picture, he does coffee, he does everything. <laughs> and he just released an amazing tutorial on working with audio plugins in Falcon Pro 10. So why don't you tell him a little bit about it? Yeah, so today we had a live webinar slash tutorial on working with audio effects in Final Cut Pro 10. We had great feedback. As editors, uh, independent editors, small production houses, we don't always have access to sound engineers, sound editors. Sound can be intimidating for a video editor. And it's great to know how to work with the plugins that are built right into Final, Pro, Final Cut Pro 10 from Logic. We cover things like Channel EQ, Compressor, Denoiser, Space Designer. There's eight total. And today on YouTube, we're gonna release part of the Channel EQ lesson. So with that, let's get started. Channel EQ is a great audio effect for fixing problems or making level changes to specific frequencies. In the timeline, I have a video clip of Steve Martin from one of Ripple Training's YouTube shows. During recording, there was an issue with the mic that resulted in less than ideal audio. Let's play it back. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of MacBreak Studio. This week, I want to show you three things that will really come in handy when you want to perform matched action edits. Now that we know what we're working with, Let's apply the EQ. The channel EQ effect can be found in the effects browser in the EQ category. To apply it to the clip of Steve, I'll drag and drop it. Next, I'll navigate to the inspector and click the HUD button for the channel EQ. What you see here is a range of frequencies starting at 20 Hz going all the way to 20,000 Hz. Right now, there are no changes being made. Along this middle line are colored control points that you can drag to either boost or attenuate a particular frequency. I'll undo that change. Each colored dot corresponds to a set of controls at the bottom of the window. The orange dot here is set at 75 Hz. We haven't made any changes yet, so it's at 0 dB. The bottom number is for the Q. If I raise up this control point at 100 Hz, you can see my Q is at 0.6. The Q determines the range of frequencies that you affect with your adjustment. You can also adjust the Q by dragging here. If I set a wider Q, I'm now boosting frequencies below 20 Hz all the way up to around 500. If I reduce the Q down, I'm only boosting the 100 Hz frequency. I'll undo that. Along with the parameters at the bottom, each control point has a button at the top for disabling and enabling. On the far left and the far right, we have the high pass filter and the low pass filter. The left one is the high pass filter. It allows high frequencies to pass while reducing the level of the low frequencies. The low pass filter is the same, but in reverse. When you have a high and a low pass filter applied, it is called a band pass filter. I don't need those, so I'll turn them off. On the right side of the window is the gain slider that allows us to either lower or boost the overall signal. If I boost the gain, we can see it reflected in the waveforms below. I'll put that back at zero. In the bottom left, we have the analyzer button. If I turn that on and play back the clip of Steve, we will get live feedback showing us the frequencies of his voice. Stopping playback, we can see Steve's voice is ranging from about 100 Hertz all the way up to 10,000 Hertz. The analyzer is a great reference when it comes time to make adjustments. Moving to the right is Q couple. To show what Q-Couple does, I'll disable it, and then raise one of the control points. With Q-Couple disabled, you adjust a wide range of frequencies. I'll undo that, and re-enable Q-Couple. Now when I raise a control point, a bell curve is created, producing a narrower adjustment affecting less frequencies. I'll leave the Q-Couple enabled and undo my adjustment. Next, we have Processing, which allows you to choose between stereo and the different audio channels. Having gone through all the settings, we can start to work on Steve's audio. Before making any changes, I'm going to set a small range here and make sure that loop playback is enabled in the playback menu. And then press the forward slash key for looping. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of MacBreak Studio. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of MacBreak Studio. Listening to the audio, it sounds like we need to boost the bass frequencies. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of MacBreak Studio. I'll raise up this control point around 200 Hertz.
and then spread out the cue. I'll disable and re-enable this effect while hey playing guys, back. Welcome to another edition of Mac Free Studio. This week, I want to show you three things that will really come in handy when you want to perform matched action edits. They're the event viewer, the slip tool, and the slide tool. Wow, much better. I'm also noticing a strange tinniness to the audio. To address it, we can use a technique called sweeping the audio, or sweeping the frequencies. I'll drag up on another control point quite a bit, and then I'm going to narrow my correction by reducing the cue. And as I play back, I'm going to drag this audio back and forth to see if I can pinpoint the sound. With my range still selected in the timeline, I'll press forward slash. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Mac Free Studio. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Mac Free Studio. Hey guys, welcome Notice to as I sweep back and forth, you'll hear hey guys, certain sounds get boosted. Edition of Mac Free Studio. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Mac Free Studio. Hey guys, just under 1000 Hz seems to be where the sound hey guys, resides. To now that I've located it, I'll just hey guys, pull down on the control point to remove that frequency. This is referred to as a band reject or a notch filter. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Mac Free Studio. This week I want to show you three it's not perfect, but compared to the original audio, it is a vast improvement. I could continue to adjust each frequency, but I have a more thorough adjustment saved as a preset called Steve Audio Fix that can be accessed in this menu here. If you wanted to create a new preset, select Save Preset at the bottom. I'll select the Steve Audio Fix and then play back. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Mac Free Studio. This week, I want to show you three things that will really come in handy when you want to perform matched action edits. Sounds great. Keep in mind that the channel EQ is not magic, but it can be very helpful when you need to make targeted adjustments to frequencies of an audio file. So I hope you found that helpful. That was a big improvement to Steve's voice. Yeah, it was. It was really great. <laughs> I'm glad you don't always sound like that. <laughs> no, I don't. But man, he does make me sound good. If you like what you saw, we have a full set of his plugin tutorials available right now. The link below, you can get the whole set for 20 bucks. 24 hour sale, it's regularly 40, uh, no 30. It's regularly 30 bucks, so check it out below. Click the link below and uh, I guarantee you will love this tutorial. Thanks guys.